Hello, my name is Holly Fulton, and I live in Denver, Colorado, and I grew up in Rhode Island. So, I see myself as a truth seeker and speaker, and my main truth telling is about my ancestors, the DeWolfs of Rhode Island and their slave trading business which was three generations. So they were seven, six, and five generations ago for me. And nine of them were extremely involved in the slave trading business in Bristol, Rhode Island, Ghana, Africa, and Cuba. And that these activ no, not activities, that these horrors, tortures, traumas and just murderous endeavors were so heavily practiced and they were believed to be a way to do business is still very, very disturbing to my soul. And um, they were done by people who were ancestors of mine. So, um, and as I grew up, I was supposed to admire them and respect them, seriously. We were never told that's what they did. We were just told we were supposed to admire our ancestors. So learning this um, lie later on in life was very, very disturbing. So I decided in 2013 that I would get on a stage and talk about my story so people in the audience can hear from a descendant about this history, being in the family, and just how it impacts me. And I did two different 20-minute monologues at a theater in San Francisco called The Marsh. And after moving to Denver here in 2014, I've been developing and working on an hour-long um, monologue piece. And the title of my monologue is either Buried Secrets, which is a pretty juicy title, Buried Secrets or Buried Secrets in Paradise, Breaking Through Scars. I know that's a long title, but it really summarizes what my piece is about. And it, it's my story as a privileged descendant of this slave trading business and its impact on me. And my hope is that white people will say to themselves after watching it, you know what, she's right. We need to talk about this. We need to look at this. The silence must. So also I participated in a documentary film which changed my life to be part of this film. It's called Traces of the Trade. And I and some fellow descendants, so we're all cousins, took the trip, we retraced the slave trade triangle and it aired on PBS in 2008 and 2009. And people still watch this film and they talk about it and I facilitate groups and get people to talk about what does it bring up for them to watch something like this. And I'll say that one really important aspect that many people seem to get, uh, which we hope for in making the film, is that whether you're a direct descendant of this activity or not, you need to acknowledge and talk about this history and, you know, do something about anti-racism work as all of us white people inherited this ugly history and we're living in the legacy in a way that continues to harm people of color. So an, another way that I feel I'm taking action around this history is I teach and facilitate a class, which is really exciting, at an adult education center, and the class is called Exploring Being White, Supremacy, Privilege, and Fragility. And I, you know, my bottom line is I wanna help other white people um, wake up because I consider it a waking up process and I continue in my own waking up in helping others and it's very very tricky process in terms of coming across in a way where you don't turn them off so I think we have to practice not being well I know it all and you better learn this it's a very particular style that I'm still developing and I'll continue to learn it for a long time and one other thing I'm involved in is I'm a member of a committee in Bristol, Rhode Island, where I grew up. And we're working on establishing a marker in Bristol, and it's part of a national project called the Middle Passage Ceremonies and Port Markers Project. This project invites all 52 of the towns and cities on the east coast and the southern coast of this country who were involved 
in the transatlantic slave trade. And the hope is that all of them will develop markers, ceremonies, memorials, etc., acknowledging their involvement and also acknowledging the suffering of Africans and how African Americans were involved in developing all these communities. It's a wonderful project and UNESCO is involved in it. So, you know, reading books, watching plays and movies and videos, attending and participating in museums, presentations, performances, workshops, conferences, etc. It's all, it's all part of the learning process of waking up white. And frankly, you know what? We don't graduate from it. It needs to continue and continue. And I'm committed to continuing that process.